Chapter 51 New Year You are listening at NovelFull.audio Leo glanced at the treasure map before putting it back into the ring. He wished he could go immediately and find whatever the map was leading to, but he couldn't. Valker's forest was dangerous because the inner forest was filled with second circle magical beasts. That was only the inner forest. The center of the forest would definitely have a third circle magical beast. And this wasn't even considering the recent change in Valker's forest. If there was indeed a beast wave that would happen in the near future, there were chances that the magical beast could be a fourth circle magical beast. Once he had everything sorted, he got up and went to the pool. It had been three hours since he had come to the mansion, and the destruction he had caused was tremendous. Half of the mansion was burnt down and the Blacktooth gang was completely gone. After making sure that the fire wasn't going to spread anywhere else, he left the place to go back to his house. He got back and quickly went to sleep. He would have a long day the next day and wanted to be in his best condition for it. He woke up the next day to a loud knock on his door. Come in. He said. He slowly got up from his bed while Daphne entered the room. Why are you still sleeping? We should go to the festival today. She said excitedly. The festival was an annual New Year's celebration that the city had. He had been to the ones before and they were fun as long as you had a little money to play some of the games there. He had always saved up enough to play them the years before this, but now he didn't have that problem. I'll get ready. Don't worry. He said. He yawned while getting up to get ready. You go outside. I'll be out in thirty minutes. He quickly got ready and they both set out to the festival. It was early in the morning, but they were planning on spending the entire day there. The day went by incredibly quickly, and the night approached. As it did, the street started to get bright with lamps and colorful lights. Everyone was enjoying their time. Leo and Daphne were also having a fun time. Eventually, the crowd started clearing out and they all went back to their homes. Both of them also went back. When they got back, they were exhausted. Before she could go back to her room, Leo stopped Daphne. Wait, he called her. She turned back. What? She asked him. Happy birthday, he said. He didn't have any gift in his hands, but he wanted to wish her. She smiled. She leaped into him and hugged him. Happy birthday to you too. She said. She was only turning 13 while he was now 14 years old. They were still incredibly young, but they had always been that. Every year that went by, they got more mature and more stable. Okay, now we should sleep. We'll see if we can go do anything tomorrow. Leo said. He didn't have anything planned, but it was the new year. He was going to start off with some fun and then go back to training. The next day, the two of them went to get lunch at a nice restaurant. After that, they went back to their house and the celebrations died off. Daphne went back to her room while Leo left the house again. He was going to the Thousand Treasure Tower. He had gotten so much money and so he had to use a lot of it. He was only planning on buying one item for the day and saving the rest for a later day. When he got there, he went to buy the Aura Gathering Pill. He was finally going to start learning how to use Aura. Ever since he became a second star mage, he was able to see the Aura that Aura Knights use. He was able to detect it and understand its flow. He hoped that this experience would translate to actually gathering Aura and being able to use it. If he could do that, then he would no longer have to hide his magic as much and use Aura instead. He bought five Aura Gathering Pills. The money came solely from the money he raided from the members he killed. They had a decent amount of money themselves since it included normal gang members as well as higher level members. He stayed even after purchasing the pills to browse through any interesting materials. He looked at the items that were on display and he realized that there wasn't anything on that floor for mages. Everything there was for Aura Knights. He realized that he would have to go to the floor above for items that would actually help him, 
but he couldn't do that since the qualifications to enter the first floor were that he had to be a second circle or a knight or be a noble. He decided to leave and go back to his house. When he reached the house, he didn't start training immediately. He wasn't in a hurry to become an Aura Knight yet. Instead, he went out to the inn that he normally went to. This was because he needed information. The entirety of the previous day, he had spent time with Daphne. That was why he didn't know what information about the Blacktooth gang actually spread out. He needed to know out of curiosity and because of his own involvement. When he got to the inn, he could hear a lively noise from the inside. When he entered, he saw that the adventurers and mercenaries were all partying. He was curious and went to the front. He saw the owner was incredibly busy serving a lot of beer to the customers. He saw Leo and stopped his work. Hello, Leo. How are you? Miller greeted him enthusiastically. Hello, Miller. I'm doing good. How about you? Why is the inn this lively today? Leo asked him. Oh, this. I gave everyone here a free beer on the house. Today is the new year. And we started this year with such wonderful news. He said. Leo could already guess where this was going, but he still had to ask. What happened? Miller smiled widely. A mage from Eldridge came and wiped out the Blacktooth gang. Now, I don't have any more debts left. All thanks to that noble person. I would give them a big kiss if I could see them. Leo cringed inside but kept a smile on the outside. That is such good news. Good for you. But why would a mage come to Soul Haven? He asked. I don't know. Now that you've mentioned it, I never actually though about that. Why was he here? Miller went deep into thought. BVEC, okay, I'll see you around. Leo waved and left the inn. He didn't get any food because he did everything he wanted to. All he wanted to do was plant the thought of why the mage was there. Once Miller asked the adventurers, someone would start making rumors. Eventually, there would be enough rumors about the mage that everyone would think this person definitely existed. Chapter 52 Aura You are listening at NovelFull.audio Leo got back to his house and finally got some time to train. He had a busy week for the past few days and now he was ready to do what he had been trying to do for almost a month. He was finally ready to train his aura. That he quickly got ready to start his training. He was going to hold himself up in his room until he at least detected aura. He first decided to wait on the aura gathering pill and just try gathering aura by himself. He closed his eyes and focused his mind, attempting to sense the aura that surrounded him for a second time. He was eager to experience it for himself. Unlike magic, which was so natural to him, aura was different. Magic was the power that let him harness the elements of nature. That was why it seemed like it was a part of nature. He felt it was more abundant in the forest and less abundant in the city. On the contrary, the books that taught him aura said that it was the energy that flowed through all living beings. It was the power that let a person harness their own power to the fullest capabilities. When he sensed magic, he had seen colorful particles that represented the various elements of nature. However, the aura that he had sensed in Daphne and other aura nights was different. It was an energy stream that flowed around their entire body and originated from their dantian. He tried to look for this mysterious energy once more. When he did, he could see the magic that surrounded him, but this magic was so bright that he couldn't see any aura. This was the main reason he wasn't able to train in aura. His affinity with magic was proving to be his downfall. He took a deep breath and decided to take one of the aura gathering pills. When he did, he suddenly realized why the pill was so effective. It didn't help in sensing aura. The pill itself had aura hiding in it. When he took the pill, he immediately sensed a stream of aura flowing out from the pill and entering his body. He quickly tried controlling the stream of aura. The minute he tried to force it into his dantian, the cool stream of aura suddenly changed its nature. 
It turned into a hot blazing force that started to burn his insides. He quickly let go of control over the aura and the burning sensation stopped. He quickly decided to just keep the aura inside his body by circulating it around his body while thinking about what to do to the aura. So instead of forcing the aura into his dantian, he just circulated the aura throughout his body, letting his muscles soak in the cool, pleasant sensation of the aura. As he did that, he slowly fell into a trance. He stopped trying to think about trying to control it and just let it flow through his body. As he did that, he felt he was getting more and more attuned to the energy. As time passed, the flow of energy started to slow down. Eventually, he could feel that the aura had lost all of its previous wild nature. He tried controlling it again and guided it into his dantian. This time, the aura listened to him and slowly entered his dantian. The aura congregated at the center and he could finally take a breath. He let out a breath of air that was filled with stress and tension. He was very worried when he felt the burning sensation in his body, but his quick thinking saved him from too much pain. He opened his eyes and saw that a lot of time had passed. When he had fallen into the trance, he had completely lost his sense of time. The sun had already started rising, which meant that he was training for almost eight hours. He got up to take a quick refresher. He walked around a little before sitting back on his bed. He had made a lot of progress in the eight hours that he had trained. He had sensed aura, which was the first and most important step in training in aura. After taking an hour dot long break, he went back to training. During the break, he went outside to grab some food and saw Daphne. Since he saw her once, she wouldn't bother him for several hours. He quickly sat on the bed and grabbed another pill from his dimensional ring. Before eating it, he tried sensing the aura again without the help of the pill. He was hoping that since he had aura in his body, it would be easier to sense it. He was wrong. When he tried sensing aura again, he was once again overpowered by the magic in the air. He sighed and popped the pill into his mouth. It was the only way he could actually train in aura for now, but at least it worked. He started circulating the aura around his body again, letting it soak into his muscles. By the end of the day, he had gone through another pill. He only had two pills left. However, the progress he had made was enormous. He had reached the peak stage of the apprentice aura night. The only thing left for him to do was form his first aura circle. However, he wanted to be careful when doing this. He realized very quickly that the amount of aura he had in his body wasn't normal. He was only an apprentice aura knight, but the amount of aura he had was the same as Daphne. Daphne was a middle, stage, first circle aura knight. The difference between her and an apprentice aura knight was supposed to be unsurmountable. However, he had taken three aura gathering pills without forming his first circle. This meant that his body needed more aura to break through. He didn't want to start breaking through until he bought a few more aura gathering pills and see if there were any better pills that might help him break through. Before doing any of that, he wanted to test if the amount of aura also meant that he could do the same things that Daphne could do without having a circle. The next day, he went to the Thousand Treasure Tower to answer all these questions he had. However, when he got there, he saw that there were a lot more people there than normal. The place was entirely packed. He moved closer to the tower to see what the issue was. As he got closer to the crowd near the entrance, he saw what was different. There was a huge board above the entrance. It was only a temporary board, but it was extravagantly decorated. On it, were a few dates. Annual Treasure Auction, January 7th, January 8th, it was the information pertaining to an auction that was being held there. Normally, that wouldn't mean anything to Leo, but now he had enough money to buy something he could actually use there. He would also be able to experience an auction. He quickly went to the front to get more information. While he was trying to squeeze through, he saw a familiar figure. Chapter 53 Details You are listening at NovelFull.audio In the distance, he saw the girl who was with the magistrate going into the tower. He quickly scoured the place to look for the magistrate. 
he didn't want to stay near a person who could see through him that easily. Gnav OM when he scanned the area, he realized that there wasn't anyone stronger than a second circle mage or aura knight in the area. He breathed out a sigh of relief. The strongest person there was a peak, stage, second circle mage that was right beside the girl. He guessed that the mage was her guard while the magistrate was away. This meant that the girl was someone he could not afford to offend. After waiting for a while, he walked into the tower. Since the girl probably went to the first floor, he would be fine on the ground floor. He entered and went straight to the purchasing counter to ask for some information. Hello, how can I help you? The receptionist asked him. Hi, can you give me information about the auction? Leo asked her. Yes, of course. Can I have your card, please? She asked him. He handed it to her, and she took it to the back. She came back and handed it to him before talking again. The auction is on the 7th and 8th of January. Are you here for someone, or? She asked him. Looking at his young age and appearance, she assumed he was running an errand for someone. I'm asking for myself, he said. He didn't mind that she was assuming. He expected it. Oh. You need to show that you can pay for all the purchases that you have made, so only accounts with more than 1 million star coins are allowed to participate in auctions. Anyone who does can request a free copy of the items appearing on the auction. She said. Unfortunately, you only have 3,000 star coins in your account, so you aren't eligible to participate. So if I put in a million star coins, can I participate? He asked. She nodded. He took the card and went to the counter where he normally deposited cash into his card. He had done it numerous times and was experienced in it. He took out a pouch that he had on him to mask the use of the dimensional ring. He pulled out the money from the pouch and deposited a million star coins in his account. He took his card back and went to the same person. Hi, I deposited some money. Can you please check and see if it's enough? He asked her. She took the card with a begrudging look and checked the balance on it. When she did, she was so shocked that she almost dropped the card. She handed the card back to him with shaky hands. Yes, sir. You have enough money to participate in the auction. Do you want to hear the next steps to participate? She asked with a more subdued tone of voice. Yes, please. He said with a huge grin. I can have you registered for the auction, so you can come in on the day of the auction and proceed to the auction hall. You are in the general buyer section. You can collect your paddle on the day of if you show your card there. She informed him. He nodded. Thank you for your help, he said. Can I get the items that appear on the auction? Of course, she said. She quickly scrambled to the back and brought a nicely decorated book. She handed it to him and he left. The reason she became so respectful was because a million star coins was a lot of money. Only the wealthy commoners and the nobles could have them. This typically meant having a second circle person as a member of the family. And a second circle member was essentially a powerhouse in a small city like Soul Haven. There were around a thousand of them in a city of 70,000 people. Leo was more special because he was so young and had this much money. It meant that he was part of a huge family. Even though he said he wasn't there on behalf of someone, she assumed he was from a big family. Meanwhile, Leo was facing his own set of problems. He was just walking out when he encountered the girl who was with the magistrate. She had also come down the stairs at the same time that he was leaving the tower. He didn't know why she was using the commoner's entrance. Aurora saw him and recognized him from a few days ago. Unfortunately for him, she approached him. The person guarding her also approached him with her. The girl had light blonde hair and green eyes. She was an apprentice mage based on what he sensed from her. She looked the same age as him, so he assumed she was. She was dressed in a very fancy coat and she looked like she was in charge. Her demeanor showed that she was a noble. 
the person next to her was a young man in his twenties. He was dressed in a military uniform with a crest pinned to his chest. Based on the gazes of contempt he gave the commoners who passed by, Leo guessed he was a noble. You. What's your name again? She asked Leo. Me. I'm Leo. What's your name? He asked her. He tried to be polite, but his use of language quickly showed the difference between the two. Lady Aurora, why are we wasting your precious time like this? Is this boy an eyesore to you? We can have him removed. The man said. Even though he could, Leo stopped himself from blowing up the mage in front of him. He was angry that the person thought he was that expendable, but that was just how nobles were. No. My grandfather liked this boy. I thought it would be interesting to actually converse with him, she said. She had a more formal tone of voice than the last time he saw her. It was probably because she was with a different person. As for you, I'm Aurora. Nice to meet you, she said. She didn't curtsy, but she took his hand and shook it. Leo could immediately see the person behind her was getting angry at this. I'm sure that you have more important things to do. Why waste your time on me? He asked her. She frowned a little. What are you implying? Are you implying that I cannot dictate how I use my time? She asked him. No, of course not. I was just, he trailed off. He didn't want to trap himself. He was trying his best to decrease the interaction he was having with her. She looked back and saw that her guard was getting impatient. She smiled at this. Mr. Redback. I don't want to keep you waiting here. How about I have a meal with my friend here while you take care of any business you have? She said to him. The man became flustered. I can't do that Lady Aurora. The Lord Magistrate assigned me to protect you from. There aren't any threats that I will face. I can handle myself. She said. While this conversation was happening, Leo internally killed himself a few times. Why did he have the worst luck possible? Chapter 54 Academy You are listening at NovelFull.audio Leo suddenly found himself walking with the granddaughter of the most powerful noble in Soul Haven into the noble district. He had hoped that the man would be able to convince her to not eat with him, but she was too strong.willed for that. So, are you a mage? He asked her. He didn't want the entire ordeal to be filled with dreadful silence. Yes. I am an apprentice mage. My grandfather said that you were an aura knight with a weird aura. She said. Leo shook his head. No, I'm just a normal aura knight. I am not even a first circle aura knight like my friend. She was there the other day, he said. Aurora smiled. I want to meet her too. It's hard making friends my age because the kids in the noble district are very arrogant. They quickly reached the gate that separated the noble district from the commoner's district. A guard was at the gate and inspecting the people who were going in. There was a line full of workers who worked inside. Aurora skipped the entire line and walked, so he just followed her. When she came close to the guard, the guard bowed to her. Good day, Lady Aurora. Is this your servant? He asked. Aurora shook her head. He's my friend. She kept walking and Leo followed her. Am I also supposed to call you Lady Aurora? He asked. She shook her head. I don't like formalities like that. So, when did you start training in Aura? I started a wee. A year ago. I'm very slow at progressing. He almost gave away that he had only become an Aura Knight a few days ago. He quickly corrected himself. What about you? When does a mage start training? I started when I was ten years old. I go to the Royal Academy in the capital. It's been four years and I didn't even form my first magic circle. Compared to me, the people there are so much more talented. She sighed. The Royal Academy. What's that? Leo asked. 
he was very intrigued by it. It's the best place to learn aura or magic. Only the most talented mages and aura knights go there. Even if you are a noble, you still have to pass a test to study there. It has the best teachers and the headmaster is a sixth circle mage. She started talking about the academy with fervor. She was very excited about the place. Are you here on a break, then? He asked her. She nodded. They went into a restaurant close to the gate and quickly got some food. While they were eating, they continued talking. Yes. I came for the new year. I go back in a few days. I don't have any friends when I come here normally, so I wanted to make new ones. She said. Leo nodded. I agree with you. I don't have a lot of friends my age either. It's hard to find friends without going to an academy. Aurora was shocked. You guys aren't in any academy. Then did you learn to become Aura Knights by yourself? Isn't there an academy in Soul Haven? I think commoners are also allowed to join it. There should be an Aura Knight division there. Leo shook his head. He knew that the academy existed, but they only took in students who could pay. Until a few months ago, he couldn't even afford to live in a proper house. Tuition for academies was in the hundreds of thousands of star coins each year. We couldn't afford it. Academies are for rich people and nobles. Not everyone can attend. He said. You and your friend should try to join the Royal Academy, then. They let new students in every year around August. You can try to apply. Since you are a commoner, it will be harder, but your friend can definitely get in. I know less than ten people in my grade that reached the middle stage of a first circle. She will easily get in. Best of all, the academy is completely free for commoners. She said. Leo was blown away by this information. He didn't think that it would be this amazing of an opportunity. Thanks for telling me. I will check it out in August. He said. They kept talking until Leo realized that he had to go. Well, it was very fun meeting you. Who knows, maybe I'll see you at the Royal Academy. He said. She smiled. Throughout the entire conversation, her language and posture became more relaxed. Of course, I am looking forward to it. It was very nice meeting you. I will consider you as one of my friends. She said. Both of them stood up. She didn't bother paying the bill and no one asked about it, so he assumed that there was a running tab. They bid farewell to each other and Leo walked out of the gate. As he was walking, he thought about the academy. It was such a good opportunity that he wanted to try it. Unfortunately for him, he would never actually attend the place. He knew that a powerful mage might detect that he had magic far too easily. He couldn't risk it at all. However, that wasn't the case for Daphne. She was only thirteen and she already became a first circle or a knight. She would have a bright future if she went to the Royal Academy. He was going to convince her that it was the best option for her. That was the best thing he could do. Traveling to the capital wasn't that hard. There were multiple caravans that left each week. It would cost less than ten thousand star coins to go there. If it didn't work out, he could just come back. When he got back, he took out the book that contained all the objects that were up for auction from the dimensional ring. He started browsing through them to see if he could use anything. As he was doing that, he thought about what he should actually focus on. He knew that he was primarily a mage. He innately liked magic more than aura. But, he would always have to train his aura to mask where his strength came from. From his earlier training, he realized that he could only train Aura if he used pills to supplement his training. So to train in Aura, he would become a money dot swallowing hole. He would constantly need to buy pills. He also noticed that the efficiency of the pills was going down after each pill that he took by just a little. It wouldn't make a difference for the first dozen pills, but he expected to see a difference after that. As he was thinking, he suddenly stopped at an item that he knew was going to be perfect for him. 
Swift Ascension Pill, helps in breaking through the first circle or a night. Improves chance of forming the first circle by 30%. Below the information was a diagram of the pill. It was a light blue pill that had partial clouds on it. Below that was the starting price. 500,000 star coins, now he knew why he had to show that he had at least 1 million star coins. Chapter 55 Auction I You are listening at NovelFull.audio The days passed quickly. Leo tried breaking through organically over these days but he could never surpass the limit by himself. He simply could not draw in the aura by himself and the aura from the pills wasn't helping him actually make the circle. He didn't know how it helped Clarice with her breakthrough, but his body was different. The only way he could think about to break through was to buy the swift ascension pill at the auction. So when the day of the auction came, he was very excited. He had bought himself better clothes to wear so that he wouldn't seem out of place there. He told Daphne he was going out for work and went to the auction. While he was wearing nice clothes, he also had a lavish cloak he bought for 10,000 star coins that covered his face. He didn't want to be seen by anyone powerful who might also want the pill. After getting ready, he set out to the auction hall. When he got there, he saw that the tower was closed. Since the auction was their biggest priority at the time, they didn't even bother opening the tower to the general public. Outside the tower was a small crowd of people trying to get inside the auction hall. There were maybe a couple of hundred people there. It was right before the auction hall inside the tower opened, so he assumed that these were all of the participating people. As he walked forward, he saw that he recognized one of the people there. It was the mage that was guarding Aurora. She wasn't with him, so he assumed that she went back to the academy. He quickly pulled up the cloak to hide his face. There was more than one person doing it, so he didn't look too out of place. He slowly went along with the crowd to the entrance. When he got there, he showed his card and entered the tower. He was given a paddle with the number 44 on it. He took it with him into the auction. Inside the tower, everyone was led to the first floor. For the first time, he would see the floor. He had never been and wanted to see what the noble experience was like. When he got there, he saw that the place was completely repurposed into an auction hall. There was a podium on a stage on one side and a huge seating arrangement facing it. Leo walked toward the general admission seating and picked a seat in the corner. He had the book that contained information about every product in his hand. He was planning on reading it while the auction was going on to understand how much each product was worth and why it was worth that much. The auction commenced very shortly after everyone entered the hall. He was one of the last ones to enter, so he didn't have to wait for long. An old person came to the stage. This was someone that he recognized. It was the same person who appraised his beast cores. He was the person who was overseeing the auction. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am going to cut to the chase. We have some amazing products here today. We will start the first session of today now. He said. As he said that, two beautiful girls brought in the first object that was up for auction. It was a beast core. However, unlike the normal beast cores that Leo normally saw, this one was filled with so much magical energy that he knew it was extremely powerful. The first item for auction is the beast core of a fourth circle magical beast. This beast core is from the Shadowfong Wolf, an early, stage fourth circle magical beast. It was subdued by a group of adventurers from Eldritch City. The bidding starts at 3 million star coins. Leo shook his head. He knew that the core was out of his budget instantly. He was curious as to how much it would actually sell since it was the first item. 3 million. Someone's paddle went up instantly. The auctioneer announced the bid and looked for a raise in the price. 3.1, another person raised their paddle. The bid started coming in. Meanwhile Leo was reading his book to learn about the item. The beast core was not supposed to be consumed directly. It was the most inefficient way to use the magic in the core. The more efficient way to use that magic was by condensing it into a potion. 
mages who could do that were called alchemists. The Shadowfawn Wolf's Beast Core could be used to make a potion called the Shadowmeld Elixir. Not only did it enhance the mage's magical strength by a little, but it also increased their ability to manipulate shadows. This meant that if Leo took that potion, his proficiency in using the shadow step would most probably jump a level or even two. That level meant a lot of difference when you were jumping from advanced to master proficiency. The power of the spell would double. And this increase was only for a second circle spell. For higher dot level mages, the increase would be so much power that it would be more than worth a million star coins. The price quickly went to 7 million star coins and stopped. While the potion itself would be worth in the tens of millions of star coins, just the beast core couldn't hit that price. The person who bought it would have to find an alchemist and hope that they can make the elixir for them. This was a long process that would take a lot of money and required connections. Leo saw that the person who bought the core was in the VIP section which made sense. He sighed. Even though he could use the core and the potion, he wouldn't be able to afford even the normal core, much less hire an alchemist. Sold, for 7,300,000 star coins to the man in VIP box 3. We will now move to the next item, O.org. The two assistants quickly moved the item away from the stage and brought in a new item. This was also a beast core. Leo also noticed that the assistants were actually apprentice aura knights, explaining their speed in moving the items. This just showed the power of the thousand treasure tower. They had the best products in the city and they hired aura knights to simply bring it onto the stage. The new beast core was only from a third circle magical beast. He guessed that the first item was only that rare because it was the first item. He looked at the book and saw that the starting price of each item was slowly going down. He sighed in relief. He was afraid that he wouldn't even be able to buy the item he came for if they were all in the range of the first product. This is the core of an Emberhorn stag. It is a late, staged third circle magical beast. Let the bidding start at 2 million star coins. The auctioneer tried to boost the item but Leo tuned it out. He wasn't too interested in it since that wasn't what he came for. Chapter 56 Auction 2 You are listening at NovelFull.audio The core sold for 3 million star coins. The items after also sold for similar numbers. Nothing breached the 5 million mark apart from the first item. Still, the numbers were so astronomical. In the first session alone, he could count that there were 10 items that all sold for more than 2 million star coins. Time passed and the auction proceeded smoothly. The item that he had come for wasn't going to be presented in the first session, so by the time the break came, he hadn't bought anything at all. Everyone, this marks the first session of the auction. We will reconvene after an hour. The old man said. Out of everyone there, he looked like he needed the break the most. When he said that, everyone got up from their seats to start talking to each other. There were attendants coming into the room with snacks for all the people there. Leo didn't want to miss the action so he decided to participate in the conversations around him. Hello, I am Victor Whitewind, from the Whitewind family. One of the men was introducing himself to the lady that was sitting near them. She was also enthusiastic in her response. I am Lyra Silvermoon. It's a pleasure to meet you. She said. Before Leo could even start talking, he realized that the conversation was out of his world. They were nobles socializing with each other while he didn't even have a last name. He decided not to participate in the discussion and went back to his seat. As he sat down, someone came and sat beside him. He was a similar age to him. He had brown hair and was wearing a cloak like Leo. He started talking to him. Hi, I am Max. He said. Leo smiled. He knew instantly that the person beside him wasn't a noble. He was definitely a commoner like him. I am Leo, he introduced himself. Bed Odim, you look very young. Are you here with someone? Max asked him. He shook his head. No, I'm alone. What about you? 
Max pointed to one of the corners where there were a few people talking among themselves. There was a person who looked like an adult version of Max there. He had the same brown hair and was talking to some nobles. That's my dad. He came here to make connections. Are you buying something? He asked. Leo nodded. Yes, I am trying to buy a pill. It should come up in the next session. Are you not buying anything? Nope, he said. Everything here is for mages. There are only a few items for aura knights that I can't even use. They are either for rich families or powerful aura knights. I am neither. Leo smiled. He was one of the persons buying the pill that would help him become an aura knight. As they were talking, the discussion of academies came up. Oh, I am in the Soulhaven Academy for Aura Knights. I am planning on going to Eldridge once I break through to become a middle, stage, first circle Aura Knight. Then I can join one of the academies there. It might take me a year or two. Max said. I never saw you there. Do you go somewhere else? Leo shook his head. No, I am not in an academy yet. I am going to think about it next year when the admission cycle starts. While they were talking, the auctioneer came back to the podium. I hope you enjoyed the break. We are now resuming the auction. He said. Max quickly went back to his seat while Leo took his book out and started observing the auction. The items in the second session were a lot less expensive than the ones in the first session and he could see that more people in the general admission categories were bidding for them. None of them even crossed a million star coins. Eventually, the item that Leo had come for appeared on the podium. The auctioneer announced the item. The next item is the Swift Ascension Pill. This pill will help your child break through into the first circle to become a real aura knight. Bidding starts at 500,000 star coins. The auctioneer tried to hype the pill up but it wasn't useful. No one was interested in the item. Leo raised his paddle after a few seconds to be the first bidder. 500,000 from the gentleman here with number 44. Do I hear a 510,000? After a short pause, someone else raised their paddle. Leo winced. He was hoping that no one else would bid on the pill. But now that someone else was competing with him, he would have to pay more. He raised his paddle quickly before the auctioneer could even say anything. 520 from 44. The other person also raised their paddle. The price slowly started rising. From the initial 500,000 star coins, it went to 800,000 before slowing down. Leo was persistent in his bidding because the pill was so important to him. Once the price reached 900,000, the other bidder backed down. 900,000 star coins going once. The auctioneer announced. Going twice. Going thrice. Sold to the gentleman with paddle 44. Leo smiled. He hoped that the purchase would show results. For any other person, 900,000 star coins would be enough to groom a dozen first circle aura knights. But this was important to Leo because he had to show that he was an aura knight himself. He could easily earn all that money back as a mage anyway. Pleased with himself, he sat back for the rest of the auction. He didn't find anything else interesting so he just kept track of the cost of each item. The session quickly ended and it went into a second break. Leo saw that Max was leaving with his father, so he checked what was left in the items for the day. He saw that all of them were items for mages that all started at 1 million star coins. He smiled bitterly but chose to stay. For the rest of the day, he did not notice any product that screamed out to him like the fourth circle beast core. The day was very lackluster. The third session was the last session for the day, so he went back home after it. The next day, after thinking hard, he decided to go for the second day of the auction. He knew that the last product would be the most expensive one, but he didn't know what it was. It was masked by the book and he would have to appear in person to see what it was. So he got ready and went to the auction again. 
He was very interested in seeing what the last item would be and how much it would sell for. When he got there, he saw that Max was also there. He saw Leo and walked toward him. Hi, Leo. Max said. Leo nodded. Hello, Max. How are you doing? Max was with his father, so he also joined the discussion. Who are you talking to, Max? Did you make a new friend? He asked. Yes, this is Leo. Leo. Max paused. He didn't know Leo's last name and it was courtesy to introduce the last name too. He didn't know that Leo didn't even have a last name. Chapter 57 Auction 3 You are listening at NovelFull.audio It's just Leo. I don't have a last name, Leo said. Max turned toward him with a shocked face. He had no idea that Leo was not from a prominent family. He expected everyone participating in the auction to be from a rich family, even if they were commoners. Meanwhile, Max's father was very interested in Leo. He was interested in the young boy who was able to amass one million star coins without being from a family with a family name. It would mean he was an orphan, so it was incredibly difficult to actually achieve that feat Leo stopped their trains of thought. You are? He asked Max's father. Oh, I am Ian Summerhold. I am Max's father. I manage the Summerhold Chamber of Commerce. We operate in Soulhaven but our goods come from Eldritch. Ian said. I wish I could talk more, but the auction is starting soon, Leo said. He quickly went into the auction hall. He was interested in seeing what kind of items were going to appear in the auction that day. He went to the same seat he sat in the previous day and waited for the auction to start. The old auctioneer entered quickly and started the first session of the day. Like the first and third sessions, they started with boring items that only mages could buy. As Leo was getting bored, the auctioneer announced something that made Leo pay attention. This next item is a mysterious seed that our adventurers uncovered in an ancient village. The seed was regarded as an heirloom and stored in an antique box made of gold and diamonds. We don't know the exact name of this seed nor what it will sprout, but we know it will give birth to a magical plant. The bidding starts at one million star coins. He said. If it was just a normal seed that gave a magical tree, Leo wouldn't be as interested. This wasn't the first magical seed in this auction. There were two of them that went for two million each. However, the reason that Leo was paying attention was because of the tattoo of the tome on his wrist. The minute the attendants brought the seed onto the stage, he started feeling the tome react to the seed. It started becoming warm as if telling him to somehow get his hands on the seed. He knew one thing that worked in his life. Trust the tome. So now he needed to get his hands on the seed. He raised his palate. I see one million. Do I see 1.1 million? 1.1 million. The auctioneer started calling out the bids. Fortunately for Leo, even though a lot of people were intrigued by the seed, they weren't putting too much money to buy it. Normally, magical trees went for upwards of 2 million for even the most basic ones. But that was because they were guaranteed to get a tree that gave magical fruits and herbs consistently. The problem with this seed was that the environment to grow the seed and the fruit it would produce were completely unknown. There was no guarantee that a tree would actually grow from the seed, and even if it somehow did, no one knew what kind of fruit would come out. The bidding came to a halt at 1.5 million star coins with Leo as the winner. With this, his bank account was basically demolished, but he got what he wanted. He smiled happily, pleased with his purchases. He sat back for the rest of the auction, just observing. At each break, he would talk to Max and then go back to the auction after. Time passed and the time came to unveil the final item for auction. Ladies and gentlemen, we have had a fabulous two days here at the Thousand Treasure Tower. Today, we are going to see an item that has never appeared here at Soul Haven. This item will definitely be incredibly useful for anyone. Our final item for auction is. 
As the auctioneer announced the item's information, the attendants brought in a small cage that was veiled by a cloth. They set it on the stage and were ready to take the cloth off when the item was announced. Dot, a purple moon wolf cub. He shouted as loud as his old voice would. The auction hall immediately went berserk. As berserk as a crowd full of nobles could at least. Everyone started talking among themselves while the auctioneer talked about the cub. A purple moon wolf typically becomes a third circle magical beast when it reaches adulthood. There is a very small chance that it might even become a fourth circle magical beast. This cub will take only five years to reach adolescence and seven years for adulthood. This cub was found in our very own Valkyr's woods. The bidding starts at 15 million star coins. He said. Leo immediately looked toward the VIP boxes. He could sense from the previous day that there were a lot of powerful people there. He could sense four, third circle mages there, all from different noble families. He realized what a potential magical beast that was in the third circle meant immediately. It would upset the power balance and one family would become more powerful than everyone else. Except for the magistrate, but the magistrate was always supposed to be neutral. The other thing that this meant which was more imminent to him was where the cub came from. If a potential third circle magical beast came from Valkyr's woods, that meant that the parent or parents of the cub were still there. Since they were probably adult wolves, they were at least third circle magical beasts. He knew that the city was going to experience a beast wave in a few months. His experience in the forest showed signs of it. But if the leader of the beast wave suddenly lost their child to the settlement they were going to attack anyway, the only possible outcome would be that the timeline would be changed completely. Now he was going to have to prepare for an attack that could happen anytime. He no longer had any chance to goof around and slowly experiment. He was going to increase his strength as quickly as possible. As he was talking, the first bid came up. He recognized the person. It was the person who was guarding Aurora. The bid didn't stay for long as someone else immediately raised their pallet. In a few minutes, the price went from 15 million to 25 million star coins. Leo saw this happen and smiled. He didn't think that a beast cub could be worth this much. The next highest item in the entire auction was the first one which went for 7 million star coins. As he was thinking that, he heard a voice come from the VIP rooms. Till now, he didn't hear or see anything happen in the four VIP rooms that had third circle mages. Only the other rooms acted on any items. But now he heard one of them speak instead of raise their pallets. The voice was very clear even though it was soft. The entire auction hall could hear it. Why waste time? 50 million star coins. Chapter 58 Items You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Everyone quieted down. No one in the general section had close to enough money to afford 50 million star coins. They weren't going to be able to compete with the people in the VIP boxes. Moreover, they knew exactly who it was in the box. They knew that since the voice was so clear throughout the hall, it was a sound transmission technique that third circle mages could execute. Stop scaring away the juniors. If they can't play with you, I will. 55 million. Another voice came from the box right beside. 60 million, a lady from the third VIP box pitched in. The auctioneer let the voices bid among themselves without trying to announce the bids. He didn't want to involve himself in the mages that could easily outpower him. Leo watched as the price quickly shot up. When it hit 92 million star coins, the bidding stopped. The person with the last bid was also the person who started the bidding with 50 million. One of the other people in the VIP boxes commented. The Silver Shade family will definitely see a huge hole in their finances after this purchase. How will you feed the cub? Even though a lot of the audience members were thinking that none of them dared to voice it out like him. Meanwhile, Leo was concentrating on how the Silver Shade family was the one who bought the cub. It was better to know who he should avoid in the future. That marks the end of this auction.
everyone who has made a purchase can claim their items anytime in the next week. If they fail to claim and pay for their items, there will be a penalty of 1 million star coins exacted from your treasure tower account. Thank you, and have a great day. Leo got up from his seat at the same time as everyone else. He had all of his money with him in his dimensional ring so he did not have to wait to go get the money. Some people would have to quickly liquefy their assets to pay for their purchases. The Silver Shade family was definitely one of them. There was no way they had 90 million star coins lying around to use. Leo went downstairs to see if there was a huge line. There wasn't. He was right in that no one carried their money to the auction. The people who did have dimensional rings made huge purchases so they wouldn't have all that money in there. He quickly went to the counter and showed his paddle number. Paddle number 44. You made two purchases, totaling 2.4 million star coins. With a 5% processing fee, your total comes to 2.5 million star coins. The receptionist said. Can you also give me five aura gathering pills? He asked her. She nodded. He took out the money from his dimensional ring and handed it to her. Take the rest from my account, he said. She nodded and went to the back. She came back with the two items and the pills. These items are both safe to put in the dimensional ring, sir, she said. He nodded and headed back. The reason she said that was because living things weren't going to survive inside the dimensional ring. He placed the items inside and headed back to his house. He bought the pills for Daphne since they no longer affected him. He would have to see after his breakthrough, but until then he would give them to her. Dot he needed her to get stronger too for the beast wave. Once he reached the house, he talked to Daphne first. Where did you go? She asked him. He showed her the pills. I went to buy some pills for you, he said. She was surprised. Why? I thought I was going to buy my own from now on, she asked him. He started explaining to her about the beast wave. He didn't tell her that he went to the auction because he would have to explain where he got the money for what he bought. He would also have to hide what he bought and all of that would be too much work. He just told her about how there was going to be a beast wave and that they would have to be ready to face an enormous number of beasts pouring out of the forest. She took a moment to process this information. So do we just have to get stronger? She asked. He nodded. She would already fare better than defenseless people who didn't know how to use Aura. The problem with Aura was that even though everyone had access to it, none of them had the talent to learn it. Daphne was lucky that she was very talented in learning Aura by herself in such a short time frame. Fine, what about you? She asked. I am also going to get stronger. I have my own pills, he said. He handed the pills over to her and left. He told her all she needed to know. Now it was in her hands. He went to his room and took out everything he bought. He was going to see what each item is and prepare before using everything. The first thing he took out was the seed. The moment he took it out, he could feel his tome react again. He touched it for the first time. He brought it closer to take a better look at it. The seed initially appeared as a small, obsidian dot-like orb. However, when he touched it, it shined for a second and changed to become an orb with a mesmerizing, ever-dot-shifting pattern of intricate silver runes etched across its surface. It emanated an aura of ancient energy. He was able to sense that the seed had a small amount of innate magic in it. There wasn't much, but it was deeply concentrated into a small dot. He didn't know if the people who sold the seed knew about this transformation or if it was just unique to him. If it was unique, then it was probable because of his tome which was also the reason he bought the seed in the first place. When he held it in his hand, the seed pulsed with a gentle, ethereal light, casting intricate shadows that dance with ancient symbols. Its touch evoked a profound sensation in him. He felt that he could suddenly connect to the natural world a lot better than before and that if he trained his magic at that moment, he would be able to train twice as fast. 
As he held it for a few seconds, the tome on his wrist started shining like the seed. It was as if it was beckoning the seed to it. He didn't offer it immediately because he still wanted to look at it. His eyes were glued to the moving runes that seemed like they spelled something out. He didn't understand at first but still stared at it. As time passed, he suddenly realized that something changed. He didn't notice at first, but he was starting to lose magic in his body. The magic was slowly being drained by the seed in his hands. Chapter 59 Elderwood You are listening at NovelFull.audio He quickly tried to drop the seed back to the ground, but it stayed attached to his fingers. He didn't know what to do, but he didn't panic yet since the rate at which his magic was being drained was fairly slow. He looked at the glowing tattoo and then the glowing orb. He put the seed on the tattoo to see if there would be a reaction. Suddenly, the tattoo shined for a second and absorbed the seed. His 1.5 million purchase was nowhere to be seen. Dot he thought for a minute about what happened to the seed. Then he felt his magic flow was a little different than normal. He realized that his magic was still being absorbed, only the magic was still staying in his mind. He immediately entered his mind to see what the problem was. He entered the field to see if there was anything causing the change. He saw the two stars were remaining constant, but the third cloud was swirling around one particular location. There was a thin line that connected the cloud to the ground and the magic was slowly entering the ground. He walked to that location to see what it was. When he got there, he saw the seed that he had bought. It was lodged into the ground like it had been planted there. The difference was that there was a crack in the seed. From the crack, a small sapling was slowly emerging. As it started to emerge, the rate at which the magic was being absorbed from him increased. He was initially tensed when he saw this happen, but he decided to let it happen. It wasn't affecting any of his stars and he could always just gather more magic when he needed to. He wanted to see what the sapling would do to his mind. His mind was very boring before this. It was just endless fields that were illuminated by the stars in the sky. But with this sapling, he realized that it could become more than that. Moreover, the seed was initially an object from the real world. He realized that he could bring objects from the real world into his mind. This meant that his mind itself was like a dimensional ring. He just didn't know how to use it. After a while, the sapling grew to half his height and stopped. The connection between it and the cloud disappeared, but there was barely any magic left in that anyway. The sapling sucked away all of his gains after his breakthrough to the second star. He was now just an early, stage second star mage when he used to be very close to breaking through to the middle, stage. The sapling had five leaves that had patterns similar to the pattern on the seed. He decided to take a closer look at the leaf. They were obsidian dot colored leaves with the same silver runes dancing on the surface. He touched one of the leaves and could feel the soft leaf with his fingers. He tried to pluck the leaf and it easily came out. He took a closer look for a few minutes and decided to go back to the physical world after making sure that there was no more problem with his magic being absorbed by the sapling. When he got back, to his surprise the leaf he had plucked was in his hands. It was giving him the same mysterious feeling and he felt that with the leaf he could practice a lot more easier. Also, he could magically understand one of the runes etched on it. Elderwood, he didn't know why he suddenly knew what the rune meant, but he guessed that it was because of the tome. He realized that the seed was the seed of an elderwood tree, but he didn't know what that was. He decided to think about it later and tried to start training with the leaf in his hands instead of a normal beast core. Normally he would absorb the magic in the beast core with suboptimal efficiency, but the leaf wasn't like that. The leaf made it a lot easier for him to attract magic to himself. He could normally sense the magic very easily, but there wasn't any magic density in the room compared to beast cores. However, the leaf itself attracted a tremendous amount of magic, comparable to the second circle beast core. Moreover, because it was not polluted like the beast core's magic, he could easily absorb all of it without any problem. It was so simple that he decided to keep training for the rest of the day. 
he only stopped when he realized that the effect was gone. When he opened his eyes, he saw that the leaf had crumbled to dust, but he wasn't bothered. The amount of magic he had accumulated in that one session was enough to compensate for all the magic that the elderwood seed had sucked from him. He was very tempted to keep plucking the rest of the leaves from the plant and keep training, but he wanted to check some other things first. He wanted to see to what extent he could use his mind as a dimensional ring. He picked up the book with all the auction items and entered his mind first. When he did, he saw that his hand was empty. The book stayed in the real world. He went back and picked up another object. A lamp. He didn't see any success. He tried picking up something more magical the next time. He picked up a first circle beast core that he had left from his training sessions. It was still there because it had been a while since he had used beast cores to train. This time, the core was able to enter his mind with him. However, the core seemed very ethereal. It seemed like it was going to break in a few seconds. He moved his arm just a little, and the beast core disintegrated. The dust from the core still had hints of magic to it though. The dust landed on the sapling that was right in front of him. The dust settled on top of the leaves of the plant. When it touched the leaves, they suddenly glowed and absorbed the beast core dust. He saw the plant grow another centimeter but stopped after that. The magic in a first circle beast core was barely anything compared to all the magic it sucked from him. It made sense that it couldn't grow from just that. Based on what he saw though, he realized something that would change how he trained. His mind would only let something with magic enter. However, even those objects would just be reduced to the magic in them and wouldn't stay as physical objects. The plant was an anomaly that he would have to look into more. He could stop using beast cores from then and only use them to feed the plant instead of using his own magic. And if there were more leaves that grew out, he could start using those leaves to train than beast cores. This would help him grow stronger faster than just sticking to beast cores. Chapter 60 Aura Night You are listening at NovelFull.audio He took the entire day to figure out how the plant worked. After getting back to his original condition, he got ready to open the second item he bought. The first item more than lived up to its price. The amount of help it would give him in the future when training was not measurable by money. He wouldn't need to buy any pills from the Thousand Treasure Tower masking his identity to train his magic. He was planning on doing that because of how hard it was getting to use beast cores. Now he could just use the beast cores to feed his plant. He now had to see if the swift ascension pill was actually worth the price. It would be as long as he got to the first circle. He prepared himself to take the pill. The first thing he did was shut off himself from magic and started circulating the aura in his body. He did this to get his mind and body more accustomed to aura than magic because of how often he uses the latter. He did this for an hour to get the hang of it. Once he finished circulating the aura around his body, he took the item out. It was an exquisite box made of wood. He opened the box to reveal the sky.blue pill with clouds etched onto it. The box emanated a sweet fragrance when he opened it. The fragrance itself had hints of aura that agitated the aura in his body and made it circulate faster. He smiled and took the pill in one go. He immediately prepared himself to form the circle. He didn't know what a circle was supposed to be initially, so he peeked into what Daphne's aura looked like beforehand. He wasn't strong enough to see every detail in her body. He would have to be at least a fifth star mage to do that. But he could see where the majority of the aura was and how it circulated. He combined this with the instructions in the aura manual he bought. The manual told him to congregate all the aura into his dantian and then form the circle. He knew from experience that the aura would be a little wild in the start so he started circulating it. The pill dissolved instantly into his mouth when he took it and the aura within it surged into his body. The aura that entered his body from the swift ascension pill was a lot more dense and malleable compared to the aura from the aura gathering pill. It was less wild and became tame very quickly. He guided the aura to his dantian after he circulated it around a few times. 
Once all of the aura settled there, he started forming the circle. Forming the circle was drawing a circle with aura around the Dantian that would make the flow of aura a lot easier and allow him to store more aura. The way the circle accomplished this was by using runes to expand the Dantian. So for the circle to be effective, he would have to draw the runes in the circle properly. Dot he failed previously because the aura he had was too wild for him to control. If he ever tried to control the aura while still maintaining control over the magic, it would fail. He could let go of the magic if he wanted to, but he would then not be able to distinguish between the two separate entities of aura and magic. So he would treat magic and aura the same if he let go of control. However, the aura in the pill was so gentle that he was able to form the circle easily. He guided the aura into the formation that he saw in the book and let it sit. He slowly drew the runes on the corners of the circle carefully. Once the circle finished, it glowed lightly and shrunk to encircle the Dantian. After it wrapped itself around the Dantian, it solidified. Leo let go and took a deep breath. He had succeeded in forming a circle. He was now a first circle aura knight. It was a lot easier than he thought because of the pill and he was happy it was like that. Now he wouldn't have a problem until he had to break through next. But that was not in the near future. Now that he had finished breaking through, he had only two more things to do. He checked outside to see what time it was. The sun was still up, so he got out of the house. He walked to the Thousand Treasure Tower. He was going to buy an aura technique. Daphne was still in her room training, so he didn't bother disturbing her. Even though he was officially a first circle aura knight, he had no technique to use like Daphne. If he got a fire-based technique or a shadow-based one, he could mask his use of magic. It would also help him in the future when he was battling if he had a shadow technique. He got to the tower and went to browse through the techniques that he thought would help him. He looked through all the descriptions of the techniques that were slightly more expensive and finally settled on two techniques. He still had to pick between both of them. Scorching Fury Thrust, a blade that radiates fiery heat as it strikes with swift precision. Upon impact, a burst of scorching fire engulfs the target, leaving them scorched and defeated. Twilight Veil Slash, a blade that cuts through with swift grace, leaving an afterimage of darkness. It disorients and blinds foes, inflicting both physical and metaphysical damage. After thinking for a while, he decided to go with the Twilight Veil Slash. Either way, the technique wouldn't do any damage compared to his mage techniques. It would be better to have a technique that supported him by confusing his opponent than a technique that produced a worse version of what he already could do. He took the book to the counter and bought it. He still had 450,000 star coins left from his original loot from the Blacktooth gang. He bought another three aura gathering pills that cost 150,000 star coins along with the aura technique that cost 300,000 star coins. With this, he was completely out of money to even buy aura gathering pills. He would have to hunt magical beasts again to start gathering money. He took the book with him back home. On the way, he planned out his routine for the next few days. The second thing on his agenda was solidifying his ability as an aura knight. Optimally, he would become a late, stage aura knight and learn how to use his aura technique with advanced proficiency. There would be setbacks in the future if he progressed that quickly in aura. He would be weaker than other aura knights if solely aura was being compared. However, he didn't mind that. Aura to him was only a facade. After he believed that his aura was strong enough, he would focus on training in magic. He was, after all, a mage first.